morning, this is Krishna McKenzie bringing you a road back to nature, exploring the ideas of natural farming and permaculture and our society's relationship with where its food comes from. So this morning I wanted to share with you the thoughts I had of of how I what I will address to the prosperity team because there is a there is a meeting about trying to revitalize the prosperity in Oroville. Now prosperity was something that the the mother initiated back in the day of the ashram where it was based on people's needs. So people would receive, you know, a toothpaste and a soap and I don't know, whatever they whatever they needed, a pair of socks or <laughs> You know, whatever was was their need. And for some people, I remember reading a beautiful story that uh, one devotee had gone to the mother and said, you know, I need a piano. (laughs) You know, this piano is like going to cost a lot of money. And there's the mother trying to manage everybody's, you know, the financial well-being. But she she made sure he got a piano because she felt that was his inner need. And to honor those inner needs, she felt was very, very important. Um, I think uh, alongside that story, someone else asked for, I forget it was some item, and she didn't some basic thing, but she wouldn't give it because she said that you're, you're not. Uh, I think it was extra ma- matches, and she said, you know, you're not uh, taking care enough, so that's why she didn't give. There wasn't enough awareness to to warrant the need for extra matches. Anyway, that just gives you a little idea, the prosperity. And again, you know, in the context of Oroville, it's the, it's the movement to try and move away from a, a cash-based economy, an economy, you know, like, like we are uh, an architecture of econo- econo- economics where we are really bound by money for every single step. The money we put in our motorbike, the repair of the bike, um, the clothes we wear, the food we buy, the electricity bill, the water bill, the house repair, the plumber, the carpenter, you know, the, the, the contribution for your kids' education for the whatever it is, the horse riding or whatever it is that they do. So the prosperity is definitely a beautiful aim. I would say the intention is is very, very, you know, wise and and sane intention to look at what our needs are and try and address those needs. I mean, it's definitely a a fine line. Um, Without inner vision, it's a very difficult line because it can become like a communism very quickly, you know. Everyone gets, you know, this and rations and... and, um, but prosperity is 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 based on something a little deeper, which is uh, people's inner needs as well as their you know outer needs. And um, so I've been asked to come and give a talk about to this group of people who have been exploring how they can revitalize these these intentions of the mother, these ideas in Oroville, and. Yeah, I've just been thinking, okay, well, what is it? How will I share? Obviously, they want to know the relationship with food and and community. And I was thinking, trying to think, like, how is it that I can share this in a, in a meaningful way? So in the past, there's been a lot of talk in Orville of, of um, gift economy. And I think a bit like prosperity and I think a bit like gift economy, these ideas, they, they become concepts. And with a concept, we're never with the reality. We're with the, just the idea in our heads. And again, what it means for one person, a concept means something else for another person. We lose the essential. So with concepts of prosperity and gift economy, I think we have to sort of realize, well, what's not a concept? Now, the earth is not a concept. A healthy soil is not a concept. 
And a healthy soil is, is what is under, you know, is what we need to create a healthy society with or without a spiritual aim, with the healthy people, with, for healthy air, for healthy biodiversity, for healthy children, healthy life. We need a, a fertile soil. We need a good soil. And that is not a concept. So I would say our primary wealth, I would say the very first step of any prosperity would be to recognize what's our most essential needs. And I would say that is understanding where our food comes from, which implies understanding the well-being of soil to start with. If that would be very clear, you know, imagine there's a few thousand people come together and say, actually, yeah, we're thinking this and we're thinking that and, you know, let's put aside the mother said and Sri Aurobindo said and, you know, whatever else, whoever else said, whatever, you know, Fukuoka said or whatever, put it all aside. A healthy society is dependent on healthy food and healthy food is dependent on a healthy soil. So if that was if that was very clear, we'd all be on the same page. And we're not on a conceptual a conceptual way of thinking. We're on something very practical. Then if we start looking in Oroville at all the organic matter that grows around us in all the forests that we have all the branches and sticks and, and weeds and and we started to value that as the first gift of mother nature and return that to the soil in in whichever technique appeals to to people um, we would facilitate this healthy soil so the first thing is is well how do you do that well you have to give time to it I would say the real true currency we have that's in everyone's hands is time. Time is a currency. How much time you want to give to something, you know? How much time do you give to your kids? How much time do you give to for your body? How much time do you give for the land? So time is our currency. So I was talking with uh, someone who's, you know, been been in the ashram and old old school person in Oroville, and they were saying, well, if the mother was here now, she'd just insist that everyone work on the land at least two hours a day. She'd say that's 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 a, that's the a basic. I mean, I don't know if that's the case where they, where she would really say that, but I could imagine there would be an in, a, a, more of an insistence that we that we do collectively take responsibility together you know so returning organic matter back to the soil is really the first thing that we need to recognize the thing is it sounds very silly it sounds very humble it sounds almost childlike and yet if we are clear that the soil is our primary wealth, it's our first credit that we have, then it's not so silly, actually. And it should be considered as something of enormous importance. And the techniques that we employ in our farming, in our gardening, um, should, in, in, should reflect the, that, that importance returning organic matter back to the soil as our the first gift of mother nature now we're still on the same page like you know a few thousand people imagine we've come together talking about prosperity and everyone is like well yes the soil is the most important thing it's the our primary wealth is the soil it's not about mother it's not about Sri Aurobindo it's not about any opinion or belief or whatever or concept it's simply that feeds us and we are primarily bodies and from this well-being of this body you know mind is mind is definitely affected and vice versa so when we're clear on that the next thing would be to look at food now 
This subject, of course, I've been talking about it endlessly in different, you know, with, with slightly different angles. And um, again, we, if we're talking about this concept of prosperity and gift economy and uh, something that moves away from money depending, uh, defining us as a society, then we better start look at the f looking at the foods that grow easily. Now, foods that grow easily, or, or we can say local foods, they're the foods that have grown here for millennia. You know, they're foods that are really adapted to this environment. They use less water. They don't just die off because there's a, a bit of a drought or, you know, or there's too much rain. They, they, they're adapted to this bioregion. So those are the first things that we should, the first foods that we should start to recognize again as gifts of the mother. I would say their mother's gifts in many ways. They're, they are her prosperity that she offers us. So those things are like green papaya and chicken spinach and banana stem and banana flower and sundakai and different gourds and cluster beans and lady's finger and plantain and tapioca and taro and elephant foot yam air potato, so many different spinaches, different beans in different seasons, different fruits like custard apple or the jamun, nagaparam, the ramphal, green mangoes. You see, all these foods, they represent mother nature's open arms they rep they represent her saying i'm here and i've always been here and i'm still here and i offer you this now if we are very clear about returning organic matter back to the soil and create a healthy soil this will only facilitate this offering that she that she gives to us and all those foods could grow in super abundance around us. I mean, the community garden projects, they, they start to illustrate that, um, how they are growing their own food and, and the joy and the value that they're getting from that, not only nutritionally, but also socially, culturally, ecologically, economically. So there we have our second step in our in our grand prosperity meeting everyone says okay we disagree about this and we disagree about that but we do not disagree that the soil is our primary wealth it's the one thing that we all agree on and then to value local foods because as i said you know they have a they they use less water they have a higher medicinal value nutritional value they're cheaper they they they're much more um ad adapted to this environment they have a beautiful cultural and social relevance so we all agree on that we all agree that if we're talking about prosperity because prosperity means well-being it means abundance it means you know, expansion. It means a society that's shining, kids happy, people sharing, growth. Well, that's the second, I would say, foundation of that um, concept is valuing those foods. So, of course, to do that is a there's a huge communication work that that I've personally been engaged in with many people for many many years now. And that includes, you know, creating farmers markets. It includes communications to different restaurants in different ways to inspire them to try and use a green papaya instead of a carrot. It includes creating gardens with school kids and doing workshops with, with schools and getting the schools to try and start implementing gardens, harvesting, cooking, eating together. It includes a lot of workshops, it includes, I don't know, festivals and celebration. You know, there's this whole, this is whole spectrum of interactions that, uh, that will bring us back slowly, slowly to these, to these primary values, the, the soil and the food, local foods. And I would say the third 
thing that we, we, we can all agree on is that if we do these things, actually they're acts of love to mother, to the mother. Specifically, we can, if we, if, if that is our, you know, if that is our, our direction in our spirituality, you know, I know people have different, different directions, but if it is that, and we, we recognize through the, through the agenda and all the books of the mother that actually the mother is this earth consciousness. No, she's Shakti, Prakriti, nature. She is, she's this uh, earth, then these are all acts of love. These are acts of devotion. This is a spiritual path. So actually it's completely in line with what Sri Aurobindo was talking about and the mother was talking about. And that would be a very powerful means to bring us all together on a social level, on a practical level. Probably the shift in consciousness that that represents, probably the, the, what it, what it manifests in our society will naturally undermine industrialization and the, the need to, you know, to be defined by money. So it's maybe it's not so much that prosperity then is like, you know, a, a, a duality to the, to the, to the, you know, the money. It's not like, okay, now we shift to this and now we don't use money. It's not like an, an either or. It's that one eclipses the other. One is like the light shining. And when the light shines, the darkness fades. So I think that whenever we can focus on primary needs, essential needs, the most fundamental aspects of our society and think about them collectively, how do we address them collectively, we will undermine all the industrialization, the monetization and um, the loss of well-being that that incurs. It's like a spiral. You know, Fukuoka talked often about, about man being like a spiral. He's always spinning out. And you can see industrialization money, and the money sort of power. It's, it's like that. We're always going away from ourself and away from, from the simplicity and of well-being. Whereas if we, if we started to just sort of focus on the most essential aspect of our lives, which is, you know, this relationship with Mother Nature and our food and how that reflects in a healthy community, a love for, a love for, for this planet. Actually, this spinning out changes to a spinning in. It comes to a point of non-movement. Last night, it was uh, yesterday evening, rather, we were in Alok's garden because we go there on Mondays. If you had listened last week, a beautiful interview we had done with Alok. And there was, at the end of working, we had, uh, we had completed a couple new beds of ladies' finger and avrakai, lablab beans and cluster beans and um, bitter gourd. It was hugely satisfying. We were just sitting there and there was this sense of stillness, sense of deep satisfaction. And we hadn't done that much. And the nature was growing, you know, the plants were growing. And we were just there, this sort of sense of non-movement. It's very beautiful. <laughs> and that feels like the contrary to this spinning out that we're constantly doing. We're spinning, 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 spinning out more and more. And it leads us to where? It leads us to profound confusion. And definitely doesn't leave it, lead us to prosperity. So I guess I, I, I've used this radio session today to, to sort of uh, get clear on what I'm going to say in this, uh, in this meeting. I mean, they could also tune into all of the radio and then I don't have to go and give the talk. 
because I think that this is really, you know, this is really what I, I feel is our spirituality cannot become a concept. The the devotion and the love for the teachings of, of Sri Aurobindo and the mother, they, they, they cannot become a concept. It cannot be conceptualized. It has to um, conceptualize in the sense that we, we see things in a fragmented way. We have to try and come to the essential, the essential which is, which everyone can agree on. And from there we can really build the city of dawn. So thank you very much for tuning in and I look forward to sharing with you more next week. Bye-bye.